Churchill, on day one of D-Day in 1944, went to the front. And he sent a telex uh, to Roosevelt. Churchill to Roosevelt from D-Day, from the beach. Wish you were here. <laughs> I'm ready to meet my maker. But whether my maker is ready to meet me is another matter. Voted by the British people about 10 years ago, the greatest Englishman in the last thousand years. An American citizen, granted by John F. Kennedy in 1963, honorary American citizenship. Famous quote by Kennedy. He mobilized the English language and sent it into battle. Now, Winston Churchill, I'm going to give you some of the stories now. Whilst canvassing, asked by a prospective voter uh, for his vote, the voter responded, vote for you, I'd rather vote for the devil. Churchill's response, well, if your friend is not available, may I count on your support? I bet 90% of the people here know this story. But for the 10% who don't know it, I'm going to relate it. Lady Astor, uh, a member of the society, was uh, not the best of friends with Winston Churchill. And they were having uh, dinner one night, and she said to Winston, Winston, if you were my husband, I would poison your coffee. Uh, to which he responded, yes, madam, if I was your husband, I'd drink it. <laughs> Another one known by every Brit, I'm sure they teach it for A-level, O-levels. Betty Braddock, now, she was the MP for Liverpool, where you've just been, for Liverpool Exchange. Very tough socialist lady. Now, as we all know, Winston like a tipple. One night, at the time of division in the House of Commons, she comes across Winston walking down the corridor. And she says to him, Winston, you are drunk. To which he responds, yes, madam, I am drunk. But in the morning, I shall be sober. And you shall still be ugly. I'm going to have to ask your help here, actually, because Churchill went to Ottawa, and it was the time he'd been to see Roosevelt, and he went on to a meeting at Ottawa, and he addressed the House. And in between sessions, it was asked that his photograph be taken. And they set up a little studio, and Churchill stepped into the studio, and he was annoyed. He didn't want to. He had better things to do smoking his landmark cigar. He got there, he stood in front of the cameraman, an unknown cameraman at that time, who was going to take the photograph. The cameraman leaned across, grabbed the cigar out of Churchill's hand, which greatly annoyed him, and took this photograph, which you're looking on the screen at this time. Now, that photograph is one of the world's most famous photographs. But what it did, it sent a message out uh, to the world, don't fall with Great Britain, America, and Winston Churchill. The name escapes me. Who knows the name of the photographer? Who was that? You got it, Cash. That's, thank you. A quote on America. A newspaper's too thick. Toilet paper, too thin. 
The next conference which they got, had together with Roosevelt and Churchill was at Casablanca in North Africa. And when visiting uh, and meeting together, uh, Churchill expressed a wish to visit the Casbah. Now, his staff advised him against uh, fearing that he may contact uh, something terrible, some awful disease. Churchill's response, please be assured that if I contacted the awful oriental infection to which you refer, I would be most unlikely uh, to pass it on to the president. <laughs> on General de Gaulle, a very, very ungrateful Frenchman, but maybe he had his reason. It was only the day before D-Day that he was told of the invasion. And Churchill and de Gaulle didn't get on at all well together. And Churchill was urged by British diplomats uh, to flatter the free French leader. And he said to the diplomat, I shall kiss him on both cheeks, or, if you would prefer, on all four. <laughs> the Yalta Conference of 1945, towards the end of the war. If you get the chance to go to Yalta, ladies and gentlemen, you should go. It's one of my favorite places to go. The foreign minister, Anthony Eden, passed a note to Churchill, which Churchill then just tossed into the waste bin. The Russians uh, suspected that this was some sort of code and passed it to the NKVD. They couldn't decipher it. And at the next meeting, Stalin said to uh, Churchill, oh, that note, uh, to what does it refer? Um, we're very, very surprised. Um, we, we can't decipher it, he'd be quite honest with him. Oh, that. And what he was referring to was um, my foreign minister was telling me my fly was open. To which Churchill responded, a cuckoo doesn't leave its nest. <laughs> now, for the first time, that photograph, that very famous photograph I showed to you, what really happened at Yalta and what really happens at these conferences. So I'm going to show it to you. Yeah, my last time on Celebrity. <laughs> General Montgomery, mentioned him before, I'm going to mention him again. The German uh, General von Thoma was captured uh, during the war, in the Desert War. And he was invited by Montgomery to join him in his caravan. Now, this absolutely horrified the British press. And Churchill's response, I sympathize with the German general. Defeated, humiliated, in captivity, and dinner with Montgomery. <laughs> Over a conversation between Churchill and George VI about Field Marshal Montgomery. Uh, Churchill said, I'm worried about Montgomery. I think he wants my job. And George VI said, that's a relief. <laughs> now, I'm going to pause there for a moment. 
and tell you where this all began, or where it may not have began. It might have changed all our lives. I'm going back to Churchill's childhood. Now, Churchill was at Blenheim Palace, the, the family home. He was four or five years of age. He was playing in the grounds. Now, anybody who's been to Blenheim will know there's some very, very big fountains there, quite deep fountains. Churchill fell in the, one of the fountains and was in very, very great danger of drowning. Now, fortunately, one of the gardeners spotted him, jumped into the pond, and retrieved Churchill. Now, Randolph Churchill, the father, was very grateful to the gardener. Saved his son's life. And he said, look, anything I can do for you, anything that was in my power to do for you, I shall do. And the gardener said, well, I'm a very humble man. And there is something. To, if my son could have a better education than the local school, if he could go to grammar school, that would be very good. Uh, so Churchill's father said, done. Consider it done. So that boy then went to grammar school. And he was brilliant. And he got a scholarship to Cambridge. And whilst at Cambridge, he studied medicine. And then he went into research, medical research, and was very successful. Now, a number of years later, during the war, Churchill was taken very seriously ill. I mean, at death's door. But fortunately, a new medicine had been developed. And we all know what that medicine was. It was penicillin. And guess who developed that penicillin? It was that little boy who became a scientist, and his name was Sir Alexander Fleming. So it's sort of in life, you get back what you take comes back to you. So in a strange respect, it's so strange and such a strange story. Changing tone a bit, the taxi driver and the BBC. Uh, Churchill was due to address uh, the nation on the wireless, on the radio, at the BBC, and he hailed a taxi. Now, the taxi driver refused to uh, take him to the BBC. You know what's coming, don't you? Uh, Churchill asked why. I'm going home to listen to Winston on the wireless, and that's what his reply. Now, this pleased Winston greatly, and he pressed a five pound note into the hand of the driver. The response, Frig Winston, what's that address, Gov? <laughs> Winston was visiting a barrage balloon factory and took out a cigar, which he lit. A young aide rushed up and said, but sir, you mustn't smoke. Uh, Church's response, don't worry, dear boy, I don't inhale. <coughs> I would like to, to pause for a moment. Um, I founded an association called the CLA, and we have 100 um, associates. Uh, cruising the world on cruise ships and making presentations worldwide on, on land as well. Uh, and I'm the first of 20 to be going on celebrity ships this year. If anybody here feels that they would like to possibly uh, speak on cruise ships, they should speak to me. I'm very happy to talk to them. Similarly, when we finish this um, talk, um, I'd like to take questions. It's such a big auditorium to take questions that what I would suggest that we meet towards the back of this floor and then we go off somewhere quiet and have a coffee together. Now, if that's not convenient, I'm very happy to talk to people throughout the voyage. So I shall walk over there at the end of this talk. On Americans, 
You can always count on Americans to do the right thing. After they've tried <laughs> everything else. Now, there's a British comedian called Vic Oliver, and he married Churchill's daughter, very famous during the war. Churchill really didn't approve of the man. And the son-in-law, over dinner, asked Churchill which politician he admired the most. Uh, to which Churchill replied, Mussolini. Why, asked uh, Oliver. Now, the son-in-law of Mussolini had been the foreign minister and had been executed. So why, asked Oliver, Churchill's response was the Mussolini was the only politician I ever met who had his son-in-law <laughs> executed. We've all been to Ireland, George Bernard Shaw. Shaw sent a note to Churchill, reserving two seats for my premier. Bring a friend, if you have one. <laughs> Churchill's response, impossible to be available for the first performance, will attend a second performance if there is one. Uh, John Foster Dulles, it was at a cocktail party. Was, as you, all the Americans will know, he was the, at least, Secretary of State. And commented to Winston Churchill on his ample tummy. And asked if he was pregnant. Uh, Churchill replied, well, if it's a boy, I shall call him after our greatest king, Alfred. If it's a girl, I shall call her after our greatest queen, Elizabeth. However, I suspect, uh, I suspect it's wind. And I shall call it John Foster Dulles. <laughs> it's such a pleasure to talk to you people. That's the V sign, which originated from our victory over the French at Agincourt. And Churchill used it. He was putting the fingers up to the French because if the French caught any English bowmen, they chopped the two fingers off. So the sign the British gave at the time of Agincourt was the V sign, which Churchill successfully adopted. Now, I really enjoy giving these talks, and it's nice to try and gauge the number of people coming. And as a memento, what I like to do is I like to have uh, the celebrity print out a list of some of the f my favorite talks to pass out to the audience. Now, I didn't know how many of these I was going to need. And of course, this is recorded and f played back on the TV. So when I give my next talk, which is Royal Scandals, and which will be tomorrow, I shall have these available for passing out at the end of that talk. And I shall pass them out at the top of the stairs there. So that's for tomorrow. Winston Churchill. Thank you for attending today. You've been a great audience. God bless you.